Hey, what's up everyone? Travis here with a tutorial on how to create a uh, magazine mock-up so that you can apply your magazine designs um, simply and quickly and basically they'll be applied to these shapes. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like when it's done. And basically, uh, once you're finished with this, you'll be able to double click on these layers, change what you need, like I don't know, maybe we got rid of the text or something, and then you basically can close it and uh, save it and it will automatically be applied to you see it just applied there um, to the left and the right side um, I've done some tutorials very similar to this one that I'm about to do for things like business cards and um, I think the biggest thing that people are asking me to do this for is because with the business cards they're very straight edges and by the way this is a new pack that uh, I've added on to graphicriver.net and uh, I'll put the link uh, in the description soon once it gets approved and you'll be able to use this file but anyway let's go ahead and get started so I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete all of these uh, layers that I did and basically go through the steps that I took to create this let me unlock all these layers there we go so delete delete oh, I gotta unlock them okay so I took this picture uh, at my work we have a small little studio so basically I just opened up a magazine took it at this angle with a white background um, you can take a picture even with your iPhone or uh, another smartphone uh, this was taken with uh, I believe it was a Canon Rebel and uh, basically what you're kinda trying to get is um, a good depth of field as far as the blur here because that will determine how you blur your actual uh, mock-up and to make it look realistic based on your picture so what we'll do is let's go ahead and close this so we you once you have your picture ready to go uh, like this one go ahead and create a new document and this is going to be uh, US paper 8.5 by 11 at 300 dpi and then you're gonna use the move tool and you're gonna click and drag this back into your picture here and then you're gonna right click on the layer convert to smart object and then you're gonna hit con uh, command T or control T and you're basically going to scale this down to about right here. Go ahead and hit enter. And now what we're going to do is just like our uh, the business card tutorial. And if you haven't watched that, go ahead and definitely watch that. It'll kind of go over the basics of this. But we're going to right click in this. We're going to we're going to hit Control T. And then we're going to right click inside and hit distort. And then we're going to click and we're going to drag these handles to the corner edges. And you can see it kind of goes down, so it kind of ends right there. This one ends probably somewhere and what we're doing is we're we're lining it up with this page here not the other pages we want these other pages to be seen underneath this we, we're just lining it up with this top page so somewhere about right there we'll click and drag this one down to here and this final one goes somewhere around there and go ahead and hit enter and uh, now I mean this is basically how we would do the business card but now we've got these curved edges and everything and to do that what I like to do especially with something like this is I'm gonna make a duplicate of uh, my bottom layer and I'm going to hide this and I'm gonna make the brightness and contrast like crazy so I can actually see the page so now um, I can actually see because before with this one it's kinda hard to see where this edge is so let's go ahead and uh take our page here, the smart object, let's turn the opacity down just a tad maybe about 50, 60 percent and now we can see where these pages bend and now we can modify this smart object using warp and to do that go ahead and hit control T or command T again right click inside and click warp now what we want to do is we want to use these handles here so this one and this one to uh, basically just mimic the natural bend in the background here so we'll take this handle and we'll bring it way back here and then kinda up about right there and now you can see that's kinda following that but then it goes down right here so that's how we'll use this handle let's bend it about right there and then we'll come back again to this other handle bring it up some And then we'll take this one, bring it down, 
let's actually bring this down to here and then um, once you kind of get it about right uh, you'll notice uh, depending on your angle mine kinda comes up here but then it goes down right he in here and to actually you can actually click and drag inside these squares here so I'm just gonna click and drag right here and bring that down and then I'll bring my handle back up just a tad and this is gonna take a little bit of a uh, finessing to get it just right it seems like I'm not I'm just not getting it perfect right now. I think I need to move this up some. There we go. Bring this down. And uh, just for the sake of time, let's say that that matches. Go ahead and hit enter. And then you're basically going to do the same thing on the bottom. And I'll try to do this quickly. So we'll take our handle. We'll move it up to match this bend. We'll take this one and we'll bring it way down here and this one's lining up just about right. This one needs to come down just a little bit and there we go. Now we'll hit enter. So now we've got the page matching. I know it's not matching up here but that's okay. We'll go ahead and hide this uh, other layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it and I'll bring the opacity of this page back up. So now we've kind of got the uh, the basics of it. So now what we can do is uh, we can double click in here and go ahead and add some kind of design. Um, I'm just going to add a bunch of text. This is some text. And text is a really good way to get your angles and make sure it's right. If you just do a picture, it might be hard to tell if you have the correct bending. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and just rasterize and merge these. And I'll duplicate this all the way down. Um, and again, this is uh, text is good because you can really see where the pages are uh, bending instead of just maybe some object. So now we'll close and hit yes to save, and this will apply the design to the page to the smart object uh, smart object that we just created. So here we go. So now you can see what I'm talking about. This is obviously this like curving around here is not a natural. The not, not the natural flow of this magazine. So now from here, let's go ahead and hit Control T or Command T again. Right click, click Warp. And now what we want to do is, you see how this kind of has a rule of thirds designed to it? And you can see this line here. Let me actually zoom in so you can see this better. One sec. Um, right click, Distort. Uh, or not Distort, sorry. Warp. Now you see this line you can see this text is following this line. Uh, we don't really want that. We want these to kind of match the uh, the magazine. So let's bring this one up. And we know that the magazine kind of comes up and then it comes down. So the this needs to kind of come down. This one comes up. And the same thing with this one. This one kind of comes up. We'll actually bring this line over. And it's all about just kind of trying to match this mesh to uh, to the flow of the page, a natural flow of the page. So this kind of comes over here. This might come across and up, kind of like that. And this one's going to come down just a tad. Let me move this over. Bring this handle down. And let's hit Enter. And then let's zoom out. And you can see now, uh, down here I'm not really getting it right, but right up here it's looking really good now. It's kind of coming up along the page, just like the natural page does. kind of comes up and then comes down. So uh, let's try to get this one just about right. So it looks like this needs to come way over here and down and kind of like that. And then we'll move this over just a tad and hit enter. So this isn't perfect, but uh, I think you kind of get the, ju the, the gist of it. And now it's all about really just lighting this uh, so that it looks natural because right now it's just very white. And uh, so now let's go over some quick lighting and blurring techniques that I use. Um, and this is why taking a picture like this one and using a real picture is really helpful because you can see where the natural uh, depth of field and the sharpness is going to come in. So you can see this is a little sharp here and the pictures and stuff are kind of sharp. But then there's a lot of blur uh, blurriness down here on the corners up in this corner. And then for the second page, the sharp area is kind of just right in here and the rest is blurry. So 
let's let's actually take care of the blur first. Um, what's really nice about smart objects is you can apply any kind of filter that you, you usually would be able to do, but it applies a smart filter. So let's go to filter blur, uh, Gaussian blur, and uh, let's bump this up to about as blurry as the most blurry portion of the natural picture. So let's say about six, and then let's kind of hide this, and you can see six is about right. Right here, this is probably about a six radius blur. So now what we can do is we can click here on this white uh, box here for the smart filter, take a brush, and let's go ahead and bump up the size, and uh, turn the softness of this brush all the way down, and it's right up here, turn the hardness to zero, and um, when you're brushing with black, you're revealing underneath, you're basically going to, I'm brushing away the blur, and if you brush in white, it reveals, so let me just click once here, and now you can see where I clicked, it's very sharp and it's kind of a gradual change because of the soft brush so let's take a look so it looks like I need to brush kinda of like right here to get uh, this natural sharp look so let's brush here let's maybe make it a little bit bigger and maybe click one more time and then maybe one more time up here so now I kinda of got this like interesting oops didn't mean to click now I've got this interesting realistic looking uh, blur and now really all I need to do is match some of this lighting. So it looks like the overall look of this kind of has a grayish shadow gradient coming from the center fold across the page and then this area right here seems to be where the highlight's hitting. So let's double click on this smart object, not the actual icon but the layer itself over here. Let's double click, let's go to gradient overlay and let's do this black to transparent but then let's double click in here and let's change the black to kind of a, a gray like that click OK and now let's match the angle and if you can't tell if you turn the scale all the way down now you can really see and move by the way you can click and drag and move this now you can kind of really see where this angle is happening so we want this angle to be coming out of the center fold there we go and now let's bump the scale up and let's bring it down to about right there and then the big thing is uh... let's move this down a little changing the blending mode to something like let's try overlay overlay no that's not really working lighter color no multiply yes multiply will work pretty well say about right there and turn the opacity down a bit maybe bring the gradient out just a little bit more and there we go click OK and now we've got this gradient and um, it's going to be a since it's a blending mode of overlay you know let, and just to show you let's say I have maybe like a picture let's just open up some random picture here uh, let's do this and I know <laughs> I would never do this but just to show you click and say yes So since it's an overlay, it's not really affecting the picture in a weird way. Whereas if you did the gray and you had the blending mode on normal and clicked OK, it would look a little a little awkward. So let's go back to multiply, click OK. So that's really about it. Um, the other things that I like to do are um, I like to click a, make a new layer. And then I'm going to hold Alt or Option and make a clipping mask. And you can see this icon here. I'm going to clip it to the Smart Object. So now anything I do in here is going to be inside the Smart Object. So if I take a black brush and I brush across here, you can see it's only filling in the Smart Object. So what I like to do is just kind of take a black brush, pretty small but a soft maybe. Click maybe once here, hold Shift and click down here for a shadow and then change that to something like overlay or maybe uh, let's, do, let's do something like multiply and then turn the opacity all the way down and then kind of slowly bump it up until you have just about what you like so that's our nice uh, harder shadow and uh, other than that really all I like to do in the end is just apply some overall uh, color changes and what I do is um, I like to take just a uh, adjustment layer here click on gradient and do black from this angle click OK double click inside this gradient do another gradient overlay on that gradient 
<laughs> and then change this to radial, reverse it, change the blend mode to soft light, click OK, and then change the blending mode of this gradient fill to soft light as well. Bump down the opacity all the way down and then slowly bump it up until you have kind of a look that you like. And what this does is you can see it's real bright in the middle, kind of gradual gradient here and then another gradient from the radial out of it. So maybe something like that. But that's really uh, it. And obviously you would do the same thing that you did on this left side to the right side and uh, make sure once you're done and you have it just perfect. And, and I did do this a lot quicker than my professional mock-ups just to show you guys. I mean, I know the page probably isn't landing just perfect, but it's pretty decent. Um, but what's amazing is, uh, you know, save this once you're done and then you can uh, maybe name this like edit me and you can right click on the eyeball here and change the color to like green just to kind of give you that uh, that reminder like this is the one you change and then all you do is you double click in this little thumbnail and you basically just apply your magazine layout you know your left page design and you know obviously it would have like a lot of text maybe some images and stuff and uh, it will basically just apply it so let me just do something really quickly just kinda messing around here but uh, just to show you how um, how quick and easy it is to really do some cool designs you know magazine designs and then showcase them in a very professional uh, mock-up design especially if you're gonna pitch maybe a, a magazine layout or something to a client this is an amazing way to do it instead of just sending them this like flat JPEG or something you can send them something like this and that just gives it that real look, you know, they they see that and it's almost like uh, it's tangible, like it's like it's already printed or something, even though it's just fake and photoshopped. I'm supposed to say some text. <laughs> and then let's just fill in some lower mipsum down here. Edit. No, it's type, paste lower mipsum. Did it? Yes, it did. I pasted it in white. Let's just do some aerial, small aerial, something like that. So, real quick, uh, and then let me just save this here. And it's cool because this is basically just its own Photoshop document. And then, boom, it's automatically applied with the angles, the lighting, and the blur, all automatically because it's all smart filter, uh, smart filters, and smart layers. So that's really it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, you can do the same kind of thing with mugs or anything that's round. So basically, just remember when you're uh, editing your smart object to keep it at its native resolution. So if this is a 8.5 by 11 uh, magazine, make sure you create a new separate document that's 8.5 by 11 at 300 and then click and drag it in here. And then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to right click and convert that to a smart object. And then you can manipulate it any way you want. Uh, because the moment that you right click and say convert to smart object uh, that is where it's going to keep its original state when you're actually changing it so when I double click here this is that eight and a half by eleven at 300 dpi and I can do anything I want and then boom it's changed here so uh, you uh, highlight that smart object control T or command T right click inside and click warp and that's how you can get these kind of uh, wrapping around pages or mugs. So that's it guys. Thanks so much and I uh, hope you learned a little bit and thanks for watching.